Here we've got Jill D'Alessandro, curator of the Costume. Summer of Love experience. Yes. yes. And well, tell us your, your role here in the museum and in this exhibition. How about well, that? Well, I'm the curator of costume and textile arts here at the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco and co curator of this exhibition, along with Colleen Terry, who you've already spoke with. Yes, yes, and we've, we've gotten some wonderful insights. Yeah. How about you? What kind of insights have you gotten? Uh -huh. <laughs> steeped well, in all this. Steeped in all of this. The, the exhibition really started with the prints and drawings department because they have the almost the entire run of the Fillmore and Avalon rock posters. And Colleen invited me to join forces with her. And we started to have this dialogue about the um, about this shared um, visual culture that was shown in both the rock posters and in the fashion. And we really um, we're kind of discussing that if we examine the material culture, we'll understand what people's personal philosophies were really about. And so whereas the museum has a vast collection of rock posters, we have a smaller collection of Bay Area designers from this period. One of the things I really wanted to do was, like the rock posters, was only to focus on Bay Area designers. Um, my thesis came from a sentence from Valerie Steele's 50 Years of Fashion where she wrote, you know, California that had, um, that never really had a fashion industry, a large fashion industry, but had a film and music industry. When the musicians started to adopt hippie dress, there was an emergence of independent designers popping up all over California. And, and the, so we all knew that. We knew that there are these independent designers working in the Bay Area that were providing clothes for the rock musicians and their followers, but a lot of their stories hadn't been told. They, and so I went on this search to go and find these designers who were active during the period. Who made those outfits who we made saw the, on stage, yes. Jim Marshall's photos, et Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so that, that, was my, that was my thesis. So I went around and I met all these wonderful people. And one of the things I really learned was that people say that, oh, the, you know, the counterculture was a rejection of mainstream American society. And then I interview them, and so many of them were starting their businesses with their mothers, their home sewing. You know, in 1968, 85% of young girls knew how to sew and sewed their own clothes. And so what I really, my big takeaway was that it wasn't a reaction against, it wasn't, it was a movement towards something. And that you, re, and when you look at the clothes, it really shows that, that it was this really sort of, it was a po something positive. And you have to think about America completely being at the crossroads. It's like the advancing technological world. You have like, polyester is the predominant fiber in the 60s. When you think about all those kind of like, psychedelic prints coming out of like mainstream and then you look at the show and you see all these beautiful natural fibers um, leather. so leather leather was really big in San Francisco in the 60s because there was this real sort of fascination with Native American culture yeah the fringes the, fringes, and the turquoise yeah they really yeah. they want you know there was that sort of, sort of hippie um, you know uh, creation myth that they were the reincarnation of the Native Americans you know, Rolling Thunder coming into town and telling everybody that. Actually, in 1967, there were 12 tanneries in operation in the Bay Area. Um, one of the other things that was really fascinating to learn was about the influence of the Peace Corps. You know, 1961, President Kennedy starts a Peace Corps um, initiative. And that really broadens people's awareness of other cultures. And then this young generation, and also travel was very inexpensive that time. So they were traveling. They were traveling around the world and they're bringing the treasures back. And you know, the two most portable objects are clothing and jewelry. And so that sort of really influences dress code. So you can really see that um, showing up in that. Um, from a costume perspective, 
quite a few of the designers I was working with were working in, co in, in um, sewing cooperatives. The two pieces on the end are from Fred and Candace Kling, but they were also part of a cooperative that was run by Marna Clark called So What? S-E-W what? Yes, yeah, So okay. What? And she was 19 years old. She starts this co sewing cooperative. And I think this is a really beautiful idea. She had five um, independent designers working in her cooperative. They each worked one day a week for the store. And then whatever they sold of their own clothing, they got 85% of it. So you think about, you know, you know, so for so many artisans, if you're going to sell something at a store today, there's like a 300% markup. The store makes that much more than the artist. But, but Marna, at 19 years old, was giving her designers 85% of their... And so that, that's, you know, everything is sort of reflect, everything is reflective of a philosophy that's about community and individuality. And that's really what I think which I've always felt that this time period was about. It was a community that um, celebrated individuality. I love how you're really alluding to that duality that, that I'm sort of discovering now of celebrating the individual and the creative expression, at the same time celebrating the communal and the sharing yeah. of the individual creations. Right, absolutely. And I actually think you know so much of the community did um, center around the music scene, and I actually think the sort of musicians possibly like led the way there. You know, the sort of the concert was a place to, to, for everyone to gather. But then you're thinking that they're on stage, being improvisational. The stage is the stage is probably no higher than the platform right in front of us. And so it's all about that kind of, you know, coming together, but um, being part of a, a, a group, but also being an individual. Self-expression. Self-expression was really core. Oh gosh, we, we thank you for all that yeah. you're contributing to respect yeah. the times and you've, you've really put things in the best possible light, showing the creativeness, the imagination, and I think most importantly that you've indicated that it wasn't all resistance and fighting against what is. It was growing towards what they wanted to create. It was about creating something new. It was a wisdom they tapped into okay. that there was more than just complaining about what is, that right. you could make, life right. is what you make of it. Life is what you make of it. Be the change. I know, you, can, you can't help but like walk through the galleries. There's like so color saturated and you really understand how sort of positive, you know. You know, to, if you want to enact change, it's much better to come from it from a positive point of view. It's more fun anyway. It's more fun anyway, exactly. Yeah. And speaking of fun and now share love, we always love to wrap with a hug. Oh!